Hey everybody, it's Scott coming to you live from the sanctuary. It's a beautiful spring day here and I just uh, wanted to uh, share with you a couple of things that uh, have been on my mind. Uh, the first one is I wanted to let you know that uh, ever since I completed the fast on the 31st, actually that day, I was hit physically and I've been really kind of out of it for the last few weeks uh, with a couple of things happening and uh, what I really noticed was that um, it seems like many that I've seen uh, in the gray hair and white hair community, those that are pursuing God have been really under attack this year and especially it seems like since uh, they've been breaking fast and things like that. Um, I believe that this is part of the onslaught that I saw coming for 2020 and I just want to encourage us because that last part of that word that I had uh, this year spoke of warfare and I believe that we are coming to a new place of warfare warfare to stand up against the that onslaught of the enemy warfare to stand up against physical ailments uh trying to attack us and hold us back and um, warfare against persecution that i believe is building and that we're going to see as uh, we see a greater uh shaking in this nation with the election a greater division in the church uh, of those that don't want to really pursue god with their entire hearts and um and so I just want to encourage us and uh, make us be aware of it, uh, that we would pray for our leaders, pray for those uh, who are in authority, pray for those that um, spiritually uh, speak into our lives that are influences to us, maybe even have been past influences to us. There's a whole slew of ministers that Kim and I pray for uh, almost every day that we carry uh, in the spirit that we um, believe God to really uh, bless them and minister to them all over the globe. And, um, and I encourage you to do the same thing, really just to just bless, bless them, speak blessings into their lives, believe God for their strength, believe God for their preservation and safety, believe God for their health and wholeness and healing. And uh, anyway, just wanna encourage you uh, with that first part. The second part that I wanted to talk about was I uh, wanted to make sure that you're aware and watching what's taking place in the news. We are seeing an increase in several things happening uh, regarding this election already. There's been attacks, uh, I think it was in Florida on an RNC facility where uh, the left was attacking uh, the right. Uh, there was another one where there was a fellow that I think attacked some Trump supporters. Uh, there have been um, in uh, well, in any of uh, President Trump's, um, um, uh, uh, what is it called, rallies, we've seen that there's always people speaking out in those. But I want to say this, too, is that we're also seeing the same thing happening in some of the Bernie Sanders rallies and some of the uh, uh, Joe Biden rallies where the, uh, the right and, uh, and, and it's just this tension that is building and this, uh, this shaking that is occurring. And we've got to be in prayer. We've got to continue to pray and believe God. I mean, uh, the, the craziest of crazy things that we see happening on the um, Democratic side. We've got uh, right now the two front runners, one being a, an openly homosexual uh, person married um, uh, also to another man uh, running for president. He is now leading uh, by one uh, electoral vote at the moment over who is a avowed socialist um, and a just crazy time that we're living in. We've got to see what's taking place here. Uh, I'm believing God that uh, he, he will put into place who he desires, but I must say this, and I've been saying this everywhere I go, and I know I've said it before, is that you must be registered to vote and you need to vote. You need to vote r righteously. You need to vote for moral things. You need to vote for life. You need to vote for freedom. You need to vote as a patriot. You need to vote for this country. You need to vote to keep away uh, these things that, the, that are trying to come in that are really part of an antichrist agenda to overrule our society and that will really eventually bring uh, persecution uh, to the to the saints and to the church here in the United States of America. Don't uh, don't think that that is such a far-fetched thing. I remember several years ago telling people this, and they were saying, "Oh, that's never going to happen." You know, the United States is the biggest um, 
provider to missionaries across the world, the Lord will never have, let it happen. Let me tell you something, people. It's not based on the law. It is based upon the church. It is based upon the church not voting. It is based upon the church not having a voice. It is based upon the church not getting out there and doing what is necessary. It's based on the church being asleep and not being alive and not being on fire. I'm telling you that we have got to see what is going on. And as Americans, we've got to get out there and we've got to vote and we've got to quit being deceived by the, the media and we have to see not we have to vote not based on pocketbooks not based on uh, whatever maybe we've experienced in our life or things that we've allowed to do it's time for us to vote according to righteousness and God's righteous standards and um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is something that I, I think I want to start getting into and talking about is the um, the the this uh, Bob Jones prophecy that was said uh, not that I really want to talk about that I just want to I want to hit on that in in the idea of what do we really understand when we talk about things that are prophetically going to happen upon the face of the earth um, many times I think that we have a perspective uh, you know or a, a theology in our theology we believe that man has free will we believe that man has the choice we're not we don't believe in predestination in other words that God elects who's gonna be saved and who's not gonna be saved we believe in free will but when we look at prophetic things we often put them in a more predestinated uh, conclusion uh, or fulfillment and um, uh, when we think of this for example this Bob Jones prophecy a lot of people have been talking about that said that when the um, Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl that there were two things that were said there that I've read uh, one is that revival would be here and two that um, God's Chiefs his apostolic Chiefs would come on the scene now I want to ask you something first of all is 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 those things determined based on a timeline or are they based on the free will of the people of God in other words if we're talking about revival and first of all if Bob Jones said revival then I think Bob Jones is astute enough to know that he was not talking about harvest he was talking about revival revival is talking about the awakening of the church and the church being revived it's not talking about the great harvest so if he's talking about revival because I've seen some people post you know oh you know you know I led someone to the Lord whatever hey you know rev revival is here no that's not revival that's the harvest that's harvest that's an event that's evangelistic it's something completely different and um, so I believe that if he was saying that revival would be here then either one of two things is it, it needs to take place either the people of God need to align with that word and be revived or in the timeline of things we have already been reviving now I believe that there is a remnant of people all across the world who are revived and whose hearts are on fire for the Lord and uh, and 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 I believe or at least in my heart's desire is that there would be a lot more but maybe there aren't going to be and so maybe we've come to the place right now where already those that are revived are going to be the part of the remnant and God is getting ready to use us and to pour out his glory upon us in a way that we've never seen before but I also think that if we're talking about uh, the second part of that prophetic word where he says that the uh, apostolic chiefs are going to come on the scene uh, I want you to think about something is does that mean that at a certain time that God is going to wave a magic wand upon his apostles and they're just going to come forth it's it's impossible uh, the apostolic office the prophetic office these are things that, that that you don't walk in those gifts just overnight it's not something that just happens it's a it's a long process that takes place in your life and for that to really happen uh, it has to be years of preparation so it's he's not saying that that when the Kansas City Chiefs w win the Super Bowl that all of a sudden you know he these 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 apostles are going to come on the scene that they, they would have had to have been being prepared I'm talking 20 25 30 years maybe of preparation to really be true apostolic leaders true prophets in the earth to really be those that are going to be able to lay the foundational work in the church bring the reformation that's necessary lead the revived be able to be the 
the, the gray hairs and the white hairs that are, are going to lead the, the great move of God that's going to take place up, uh, upon the face of the earth in our youth. And, um, uh, and so I, I want us to think about that because I think there is an issue that we need to see as the church of God. I truly believe that the church is in the wilderness and the church can't come out of the wilderness unless we have Joshua and Caleb's in the church, which to me is the revived church church that, that until we see that people will rise up and begin to do more than just enjoy the presence of God at, at church but will be those that will um, bring effective change uh, as a church in their communities in their regions that individuals will break forth from the pews and get out into the streets and begin to uh, be the witness that God has called them to be I think when we see that really that's the real revival you know people who have a hunger for God and a hatred for sin and a heart for the lost when we see that we know we've reached a place of revival and I could say that when that happens we're going to see the glory of God pour out upon the church because when we have a hunger for God we're seeking him and ridding our lives hating sin removing the things that don't belong being filled then with his glory that we might go out into the streets and minister to people and we're going to see great signs and wonders and miracles move through our lives but it takes that that uh uh, uh, reviving of our hearts and what I want to say is that I believe that the prophetic uh, for us to be able to walk into what God has des desired it all has to do with us positioning ourselves as the church for a Kairos moment that means a moment that suddenly happens and I don't believe that that Kairos moment happens where there's a second wind that comes upon the church until we find ourselves positioned for it and that takes everything that I've just been speaking about happening in the church and us doing what's necessary to be ready I believe there's something take a look if you would at 2nd Peter 3 12 as we we end this here and look at the issue that he speaks of there that he says waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God I believe that there's something about the church that not only do we desire it, but we do something that hastens its coming. And I believe that that is what he says just before that, which is being spotless and blameless. A holy church, a virgin bride that God prepares for Jesus' return, hastens the coming of the Lord. You know, John in the great revelation says at the end of it, he says, he says that Jesus is coming back, that Jesus says he's coming quickly, and he says, even so, we say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. You know, I think sometimes we don't want to pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus, because we don't want him to find us in the state that we presently are in. So instead, I want to encourage us, something that I've been praying and saying constantly is what Jesus said, and that is, Lord, I come to do your will. Lord, I come to do your will. When I feel a temptation for other things, Lord, I come to do your will. When I'm awakened in the morning, Lord, I come to do your will. I'm here. I exist for the purpose of doing your will, God. Doing your will first in my life. Doing your will by being an influence in my family. Doing your will, by Lord, by being an influence in my church. Lord, doing your will by being an influence in my community. And I just want to encourage us to think about this whole topic of what is going to take for what is it going to take to bring the prophetic truths that have been spoken about the last days to come to pass? I believe the onus is upon the church and there's something that the church needs to do. And I believe now is the time. If it's not now, then when is it going to be? We speak of it as if it's always off somewhere into the future. If it's not us, then what people and what generation is going to bring it to pass? Let it be us that say, Lord, here I am send me let it be now in this time let it be in my life let it be in my generation let it be me Lord me be one God who hastens the coming of the Lord who lives right before you who can be used by you who can be an influencer and be a leader God in this generation 
right now, Father, in Jesus' name. I just want to encourage you with that today. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. You're watching the voice of the Harbinger. Have an awesomely blessed day. Talk to you soon. Bye.